Hello, my name is Kamzet, I'm Cloud Solutions Architect here at Nebius. And today I'm not gonna tell you how incredible our cloud is, since you're here, you already know about it, but I'm gonna show you. We're gonna start with a general overview of the user interface, then we're gonna create a virtual machine with eight GPUs, and we're gonna create a second one right after, because they're gonna be connected with a high-speed infinite band network for distributed training. After that, we're going to switch to the Kubernetes service, and I'm going to show you how to recreate the same configuration using our managed Kubernetes cluster. And after that, in the very end, they're going to be waiting a small bonus for you, programmatic interfaces. So let's begin. But before creating anything within the cloud, we have to do one very important thing in the very beginning, log into the console. As you can see, we have multiple options to do so. We have Google accounts, we have GitHub accounts, or once you have configured your company's uh, accounts via SSO, you can use them to log into the console. In my case, I'm gonna use the Google account, as you can see in the screen. So once you log into the console, you're gonna see something like that on your screen. So in the very center, you have our your observation pane, which gives you a short overview of the statuses of different services. Uh, at the very top, you'll see the tenant, which is a root entity where all the resources are located. A little bit lower, you'll see the projects. Uh, projects has, if you look closer, small flags, that means that they are located in different availability zones. And if you, if you look even closer, you'll see names of those availability zones. At the left pane, you will see that we have a list of services. We will circle back to them later. And a little bit lower, we have a management pane. We will get back to that later too. At the top right corner, we have a profile configuration. And one of the most important thing here is a subscriptions menu because once you configure your email to be notified with the events here, you will be notified with the events from the cloud, from the billing, from the technical support, etc. So this part is very important. Don't neglect it. Now let's switch to the management options. The very first option here is an access. Let's say we have a new employee, we have a contractor we need to give access to the cloud resources to or any other cases like those. In these cases, access is the place to go for you. Once you switch to the access, you go to the invitations tab, press create invitation, provide the email of the user you wanna to add to the cloud and press create. Once you have done that, you will see the user in the users list. So let's switch to that tab and see what we can do here. We can assign a user to the group. I mean, add the user to the group to assign some roles to it. In my case, my user is already a part of the admins group, so I don't need to do anything. But let's say you need to give a more restricted access to someone or something. We'll get back to that later. But for those things we have, pre-created pre groups here like viewers, admins, editors, and auditors you can use for your disposal. And additionally, let's say we have situation when we need to create some kind of automation and we don't wanna need to use some user profile. In these cases, we have service accounts. You can create a service account, add that service account to the group as well as any other you know, user account. And after creating a static key for that service account, you can utilize that service account in your automations. Next management option we're gonna explore is uh, network. And if we switch to the corresponding view, we're gonna see that there is already a created network within every project and those networks have their IP address ranges assigned to them. To change those IP address ranges, we're gonna have to switch to the settings tab in this uh, network view. And as you can see here, we can edit those. But there is one very important condition you should not have any VMs or other entities utilizing addresses from these ranges if you need to delete them, let's say. But to see which addresses are already used by any entities within your cloud, within your project, you can switch to the IP addresses allocations tab and you'll see exactly that there. Next option we're gonna explore is quotas. Quotas are very important because they define how many resources of uh, any given type you can utilize with, within any given region. As I mentioned, we have our projects in different regions and we have our quotas, as you can see, like let's say compute quotas in the EU North one, and let's say compute quotas in EU West one. So there are two different sets of quotas. So please pay attention when we, you request increasing of those. Next management option we're gonna explore together is billing. I have switched to the billing view of the screen because the very first tab, which is called overview, contains sensitive financial information, but I can show you other tabs without any problems. We're gonna start with the second tab, which is called usage. And this tab contains detailed re consumption reports on any given type of resource in any given region, as you can see on your screen. And you can see how much of that resource you consumed and how much that resource costed for you. The next tab, which is called transactions, shows when and how much you paid to us to, for those resources. And this tab can be used to just make sure that the payment made it through. The next tab, which is called prices, 
shows you prices for those resources per, per regions. And the very last tab, which is called settings, contains settings that you can change after contacting our technical support team. Now, as promised, let us switch back to the services. And the very first service we're going to be exploring is Compute. To do so, let us switch to the corresponding view. And as you can see in your screen, we have in, within Compute Service virtual machines, GPU clusters, disks, and shared file systems. Shared file systems are kind of disks, but you can attach them to multiple virtual machines. GPU clusters are the entity you're going to need to utilize to combine multiple virtual machines with the GPUs to use that sweet infinite band high-speed network. So in our case, we can create a couple of virtual machines. Let's press create virtual machine, give it a name, choose the computing resources to be with GPU, obviously. Choose the platform. In our case, we're going to utilize H100 GPUs, although we have uh, multiple other options. And choose the preset. We have a couple of presets here, one GPU or eight GPUs. And if we look to the next option, GPU cluster, it is grayed out. It is grayed out because to combine multiple VMs within the InfiniBand cluster, you need to saturate them with GPUs. That means they need to have the maximum amount of GPUs. In our case, it is eight. Let's choose that. And the option is not grayed out anymore. It is active. Let's create one GPU cluster here. Give it a random name and press create. So these GPU cluster can be created from here. Uh, if you have already pre-created, you could have chosen that from the drop-down list, or you could have gone to the very, very initial view of the compute service and in the corresponding tab, which is called GPU clusters create one. And if we would have done so, it would have been accessible from here. But we have already created one, we have configured one. Let's switch to the disk. Let's switch uh, to the uh, image with the integrated drivers. Uh, choose the disk type. Uh, to the right, it goes more expensive. Configure the size of the virtual machine's disk. Configure maybe if we need to do so, uh, additional disks or shared file systems. Configure network for our virtual machine. And for public access here, we have multiple options like uh, dynamic or static IP addresses. And of course, we're gonna need to provide a username here. Additionally, uh, we, need, we will need to provide a public SSH uh, key pair to be able to access to this VM. And additionally, we need to configure the dynamic public IP address for this VM to be accessible from the internet. Once that's done, press create a VM and just wait a couple of minutes to a VM to be deployed. Once the process is finished, the virtual machine will switch to the running state, which is colored in green. And let us just see what we have within that virtual machine pressing on the corresponding card. Let's see, we have like VM overview. We have network and boot disks. We have this configuration, we have file systems here. We have monitoring, not much of monitoring data yet because we have just created a VM. Operations, we will only have one, yes, uh, create an instance. And settings, most of which you can change only when the VM is turned off. Let us switch back to the VM overview to the network and copy the public IP address from here to utilize it with our terminal to SSH to that address. Once that's done, and we have uh, accepted the fingerprint of the uh, SSH key, we can issue a command, let's say NVIDIA SMI, to just make sure that all the GPUs within this host are accessible for us. Let's do just that. Mm -hmm. We can see that all eight GPUs are accessible, running, and we can utilize them for training purposes. Okay, now we have created our virtual machine, which is a part of GPU cluster. But for now, this configuration doesn't make that much sense. To utilize that infinite band cluster, you need to create multiple VMs. And to be to, for those VMs to be a part of one infinite band cluster, you need to choose the same GPU cluster for each of them. So once you create all, the, all those new VMs with the eight GPUs of the same type, you can start your distributed training process or whatever you need to do with a whole cluster. But let us switch to the next service, which is managed Kubernetes, and try to reconfigure almost the same configuration, but maybe with a couple of VMs being a part of the node group. But before doing so, let's go to the managed Kubernetes, press create Kubernetes cluster, give it a name, configure the uh, highly high availability option, which I recommend to keep in turned on for production systems. Public endpoint, if you need to access for the management tools to the Kubernetes clusters uh, turned on to. And once that's done, you can configure the network part of it. And once the network part is, confi part is configured, we can just press create cluster and wait until the cluster, the cluster is deployed. 
Once the management Kubernetes cluster pro deployment process is finished, it will as well switch to the green running state. Let us press on it and see what we have inside. Inside we have total resources, CPUs, memory, GPUs being none. High availability is yes, that's good. We have public endpoint accessible because we configured it in the very beginning. We have zero nodes running, provisioning, deleting. But why is that? Because Kubernetes cluster itself is just a management plane. We need to create a node group to resources and nodes to be non-zero and assign those resources to those nodes. So let's do just that. Give the node group a name. We don't need a public IPv4 address to the nodes. We have access to the cluster itself. We can configure out a scaling here. Uh, if we need to scale up or even down the nodes within the node group, adding or deleting nodes from it, uh, we don't need it for our case. We will just configure two nodes, uh, node group with GPUs, of course. Let's choose the same GPUs we have chosen for the VM, H100. And if we look a little bit further down, we see that GPU cluster is grayed out. Do you remember why? Because we only have one GPU for the node. Once we choose eight, it's accessible for us. Let us choose the same GPU cluster we have chosen for VMs. Don't do that for production environments though. We have configured uh, the network part. Let's not uh, reconfigure that. Let's provide the access information being username and SSH uh, key public pair, part of the pair and press create the node group. While that's happening, let's explore other tabs here. The monitoring tab will not contain any information because we only created our cluster and we are only deploying our node groups, so we don't have collected any data here. Applications contains a set of mostly open source applications you can utilize to deploy within your Kubernetes cluster easily. Uh, let's say we have uh, applications here for uh, data preparation, for data collection, for just infrastructure management, but there are two very important applications here. NVIDIA GPU operator and network operator. GPU operator helps upgrading the drivers to the uh, latest version and network operator helps to configure the infinite band cluster. Without it, it will be very hard to configure everything manually, but utilizing these applications, you can do that easily. Let us now see what other tabs we have. Let's switch to the operations tab, which will most definitely be empty because not empty, it will have one record here, uh, just cluster creation. And in the settings, we have a couple of settings we can reconfigure here. Let's switch back to the cluster overview. And now we see that we have resources uh, on the total resources tab, being total number of CPUs, uh, GPUs and memory within those node groups. And right now they are in provisioning state. Let's just wait while that process finishes. So now we have deployed a managed Kubernetes cluster, which has two nodes having eight GPUs each, and all those GPUs are interconnected using an uh, infinite band cluster. But we can do the same using not only the UI, but voila, programmatic interfaces that I have promised you in the very beginning. How to configure them? Let us go to the documentation, uh, Nibius AI slash docs, and at the top right corner, you'll see command line interface and Terraform provider. If you go to the command line interface, you'll see installing and configuring CLI uh, uh, articles, and you will see the same for the Terraform provider. Once you have installed and configured the command line interface, we can go to the github.com slash nebius slash nebius solution library. And in the solution library, we have a set of templates you can utilize to deploy the application you need for your own purposes. You, we can say, uh, let's say you can deploy a WireGuard VPN, or in our case, we can deploy the same thing that we have done manually via the UI, but being Kubernetes training. If you look inside the repository, you will see that there is a lot of files inside. You don't need to be intimidated uh, with that. We will need to utilize only one file here. And everything you need to do to configure this thing is described lower down in the readme section. So uh, readme section has detailed description of what to do, and we will have to uh, configure only one file, Terraform TFRs here, which I already have done. Let's just switch to the terminal and see what we have there. I have already downloaded all the contents of the GitHub repository I have been just showing you before uh, to the folder. You need to download the, all, all the contents of it because it has modules, it has dependencies. So if you will only download one folder, 
it might not work. It, it definitely will not work. In my case, uh, I have already configured Terraform TFRS file, as you can see. And now I'm going to just uh, issue a command source environment sh, which will generate all the tokens necessary for operations to start. And once that done, I will issue one more command, which is Terraform apply auto approve. I don't recommend um, using key auto approve for production environment because it has it can be a destructive operation. But nevertheless, once we file this command without auto approve key, the Terraform will show everything it's going to be doing for the deployment. So what it's going to be deleting, what it's going to be creating, etc. In my case, it will show it and it will start doing so because I have provided the key. So. Let us wait once this process finishes and get back to it. Once the deployment process is concluded, you will see something like this on your screen. Uh, hopefully it will be saying apply complete and everything is going to be green. Uh, and additionally, you will see that there are endpoints accessible from the uh, internet and from the private network. But this uh, cluster is already kind of uh, ready to receive any workloads. But before deploying any workloads, it makes sense to go and to test it. To do so, we need to go to the Nebius documentation page, Nebius AI slash docs, and go to the managed Kubernetes, uh, managed service for Kubernetes. Here we have uh, at the left pane, uh, article called running NCCL tests. And in this running NCCL tests, we have a step-by-step -step manual how to do so, but the very, very beginning of this um, uh, manual, you just need to skip. You need to start with the running of the NCCL tests themselves because most of the things that this uh, article describes is already configured using our Terraform template. So in my case, I have already followed the, 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 the steps in the manual and I have already deployed a test deployment on my Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, it has already uh, completed. And now the command I need to issue is this one to see the logs, the, 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 the result of the command. And I, I should see the output like that in the page. Let's just issue the command. And here we see that the GPUs are accessible. We have um, bus bandwidth around 440 gigabits per second being the speed of infinite band. And that means this cluster is already ready to receive workload and ready to run. And now, before concluding our session, there is a small but very important thing I wanted to share with you additionally to what I have already shared with you. If we go to the status.nebius.com, we will see the status page of our cloud showing the statuses of different services, and you can subscribe to the notifications if you need to be informed if anything goes wrong with the cloud. So now you know how to create virtual machines. You know how to create virtual machines combined with the InfiniBand cluster. You know how to utilize our UI to create uh, Kubernetes clusters. You know how to utilize our programmatic interface and our Terraform templates. There's only one thing left to do. Let us create something mind-boggling together.